Welcome to the second installment of a series my mother's now calling Pretty Good. Sequels are the topic on this episode of Guru Hub Presents Movies Reloaded. It's a working title. Let's begin. 2018 is just getting underway, but that doesn't mean we can't look ahead to see what's out there. According to my seven seconds of Google research, six of you can look forward to an Angry Birds sequel. And a third, Now You See Me. If they don't call this one Now You Three Me, I'm going to be hugely disappointed and I will boycott based on principle alone. Speaking of movies that shouldn't have more installments, Nut Job 3 is in the works. Confirming my theory that people will watch anything. Remember 2017's 47 Meters Down? I don't, but another installment's coming regardless titled 48 Meters Down. So expect at least a full meters worth of higher stakes. Deeper stakes. Pixar has a couple movies I am actually looking forward to, like Toy Story 4, which will in no doubt restart a new trilogy in that franchise, and The Incredibles 2 can't come soon enough. Big takeaway here, if the first film's even remotely successful, you can bank on a sequel, a prequel, or even a couple sidequels to get in production. Star Wars is a huge alien cash cow. An alien cash cow Disney intends on milking until that is bone dry. The Han Solo prequel is set to release this year and an Obi-Wan Kenobi movie has been confirmed. Here's a couple of my ideas that are somehow even worse than those. The first one's simply titled Phasma, a prequel story about one of the biggest punchlines in the new trilogy. It's essentially going to be two and a half hours of her doing basically nothing, yet somehow becoming a prominent character in the new Star Wars canon. Next up is Watto. This is a tip of the hat to the Star Wars prequels that only 10% of the audience likes. However, since those viewers are so obnoxious online, you would think that number's closer to 90. I have non-Star Wars ideas too, such as a dark and gritty take on Home Alone. Its title? Kevin. It's a Logan-esque follow-up to the first two movies where Kevin McAllister is bitter, he's grizzled, and he's living the only way he knows how to. Alone. He's basically Rambo now, and even though the wet bandits drew first blood, Kevin will be drawing the last of it. Let's do a pointless list. Here are the top five best and worst movie sequels I put together with very little thought. On the worst side of things, we have Dumb and Dumber 2, a film that proves the first was pure lightning in a bottle that could not be recaptured. Alejandro agrees on Twitter and gives a nod to The Raid 2. Zoolander 2 goes in the fourth spot as another movie that came out over a decade after the original. It provided almost zero laughs and no new ideas. Caddyshack 2 is a complete miss that almost everybody blocked from memory. I only bring it up now as a harsh reminder of how truly cold and awful this world can be. How exactly do you ruin the exciting high-speed bus chase from the first speed? Well, for starters, you could make it a two and a half hour snail's paced pursuit with two vehicles, the back only being able to catch up to the front ship when it runs out of gas. That was actually the plot of The Last Jedi. Speed 2 also sucks. Die Hard 5 is just the worst. I felt like a Nakatomi Plaza survivor having awful flashbacks of this pile of it was the Rocky Five of Die Hard. And at least one person on the internet agreed with me, so I'm not wrong, see? Look. Confirmed. Starting on my favorites list, we have Austin Powers 2, The Spy Who Shagged Me. Powers 2 brought back the great jokes from the first while adding in some awesome new characters and provided just as many laughs. The Dark Knight hits the fourth spot, gifting the audiences with one of the best comic villains of all time, and it built upon the solid foundation the first laid out. Here's a fun little fact for you, X-Men 2, X-Men United is one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. An incredibly robust cast juggled to perfection. There isn't a dull moment in this picture. Terminator 2 turning Arnold's killing machine into a good guy for the sequel was already a great twist on the formula. The introduction of the T-1000, that was icing on the cake. Much like my Pokemon collection, The Empire Strikes Back is bold, it's risky, it's tough to top. And the older this film gets, the more praise it receives. It only gets better with age. Also, like my Pokemon collection. Sequels are a safe bet for Hollywood, typically. They have a built-in audience that craves more from these worlds and these characters. I'm not fully against sequels, but it is a slippery slope all the same. Thank you for watching Guru Hub Presents Movies Revolutions. It's a working title. I'm gonna leave you with a few more comments from the viewers. Tony digs the Captain America sequel, but he wasn't thrilled with the odd Man of Steel follow-up, BVS. I'm in agreement with you, T-Dog. That's what I call him now. We're best friends. Jaden, much like myself, loves all the Potter installments, but he's not too thrilled with the latest Pirates of the Caribbean film. I think it's the latest. I stopped caring so long ago. All right, that's the show. Until next time, I'll see you in the future, Mr. Powers. Dr. Evil, Austin Powers reference. This is a movie show. Thank you